Hi, everybody. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm Mrs. Pond, and I have Miss Bishop here. Mrs. Bishop here with me, even though she don't want to be on camera. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, and we're going to be talking about goals, goal setting today. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you're here with us today, we thank you for joining us. And if you watch it later, great. And hopefully you share this with your peers and your family. So again, like I said, we're just going to talk about um, goal setting today. So I just noticed a few things that I would like to see the students here step up on. So basically, this is a goal without a plan is just a wish. A lot of people do a lot of wishing but they do no planning. So um, one thing that I like that uh, Miss Bishop does is she has um, her goals and her daily goals on her desk. And I think that's really cool. So it'll keep you organized. And I said, that's one thing that I need to do myself is get me a whiteboard and put out my things that I need to do for the day. So I make sure I'm you know, progressing and moving forward. All right, so a goal according to Webster's Dictionary is a noun and it is the end toward which effort is directed. So it's like, what are you aiming for? You know, we can't just walk through life willy nilly, even though some of us do, you know, and if that's what you have been doing, then you need to, you know, set, set some goals for yourself so that you can measure yourself and you can see hmm, I am making some progress here. So here we want to dream big, set goals, and take action. As I talked about Miss um, Bishop over here, um, here's a list that you can just set up, just one, two, three, set up some goals for yourself. Um, you definitely want to write it down. Uh, something else that you want to do is you want to um, check back with yourself, like set a date and you can say, okay, a month from now, have I did one, two, and three? If not, then you need to set another date and maybe make it a little bit shorter and say, how can I make sure I get this, these goals uh, attained? So if it's, if it's too big of a goal, you may need to break each goal down into smaller goals to make sure that those happen and move from there. Okay, so here's the biggest thing that I really, that really made me want to talk about goals is the grading. For all these students that are here, all my babies out in New Haven and Lake Huron School District. Um, so here, the bare minimum, is 60% where this uh, percentage line is. And I talked to some students um, all the time and one student, he said, oh, I just wanna be passing. So I'm like, okay, well, do you know what passing is? Because he really hadn't been doing anything. And a pa just passing is 60% and that's a D. And my thing is you do not wanna go through life just with the bare minimum. You all are more than capable of doing better than the bare minimum, which is 60%. So if you say, okay, that's what you want to do, and that's what you want to do, then that's fine. But I would say, don't shoot for the bare minimum, at least shoot for 70%. And if you can, try to shoot for 100. Because what is it saying? If you shoot for the stars, maybe you'll reach the moon. So it's like, if you reach for 100, and you don't get 100, maybe you might get 80%. So 80%, which is a B, that's better than a D, you know. Most of the students that I work with, you guys are so capable, and I just want to see you do well. And I'm like, <laughs> I could be a crier. You know what I'm saying? This is a place where I could cry, and I'm not going to cry today. But <laughs> I just want to see all of you guys do well because you are more than capable. Um, we do have tutoring here at the school um, if you need it. Um, 
uh, when I was in school, you know, um, I was always in tutoring. And the smartest kids were always in tutoring. That was through high school and college. And one of my mentors, he said, if you hang out with, with 10 bums, nine bums, and you the 10th person, somebody walking across the street, they're going to see 10 bums. But if you hanging out with, I don't want to say nerds, or if you want to hang out with smart people, if nine smart people over there, you're going to make the 10th one. Okay? You hanging out with uh, <laughs> people that's, that's not really doing so hot, you're going to be the next one to join them. You could go there uh, to encourage them, but nine times out of 10, you're probably going to get persuaded to do whatever they're doing. Okay? So, and the last one is, then you could be, uh, want to be a millionaire or whatever, and you could hang out with those kind of people. And if you, the ninth one, then you will be the tenth one. So just watch who you all hang out with. If you hanging out with people who are not doing nothing, you may need to get yourself another group of friends or another crowd to hang out with, okay? All righty. I do have a video here that I'm going to, uh, show you guys is talking about um smart gold okay how come i can't hear nothing which one this yep setting is a powerful Goal setting is a powerful tool in increasing productivity. In fact, setting goals can increase your productivity by 11 to 25 percent. But actually setting and working towards goals can be challenging. So let's get smart about goals. Next, specific. Ask yourself what you want to accomplish. And most importantly, why? M. Make it measurable. Are you able to tell when you've reached your goal? A. Attainable. Goals should stretch you so you feel excited, but within your current ability. R. Relevant. Set goals that are going to positively impact your life. Does this goal fit in with your other life's goals and dreams? T. Time-based. A goal with a time deadline will create a sense of urgency and give you the energy you need to complete it. Finally, once you achieve your goal, it's time to celebrate and set the next goal. Okay, so hopefully you guys got something from that. Definitely want to apply the SMART um, principles to your life and as you go forth and set goals, okay? Now, as far as this fitness is concerned, we all, okay, so y'all know that the new year is like right around the corner. And I heard some statistics that only 8% of people that set New Year's resolutions meet their goals. So hopefully you part of that with 92%. And if not, then I'm like, for myself, I really don't even set New Year's resolutions anymore the last, at least the last year. You have to set lifestyle changes, something that you are constantly doing all throughout the year. You don't just want to say, oh, I'm going to work out. And you never go to the gym. I, okay, one thing I said I was supposed to do last year was get um, my gym membership with my city. It's only uh, $25, I think, with my city for once for the whole year. And some people are paying like $10 a month at Planet Fitness and $40 or whatever at LA Fitness. And it's like they never even use their their gym membership. So it's like if you say you want to lose weight, okay, you need to set a goal. Say, okay, I maybe want to lose five pounds and by the end of the month and well not this month but maybe by the end of the year <laughs> you know you have to say okay I'm gonna work out two days a week for 30 minutes per day and you have to check in with yourself every week and say okay am did I do 30 minutes did I do one day a week did I even do two if you can't do two, at least do one. So you have to like check in with yourself and make sure you uh, readjust your goals if you need to. 
And I picked this picture right here because a lot of the other ones were very inappropriate. <laughs> but this one, I, it's three ladies that's in this picture. So um, when you're setting your goals, you may want to get an accountability partner. And that is going to be somebody that is going to maybe do something with you here. We're talking about fitness. So they may work out with you or at least you'll have somebody to check in with you to see. You can do it, girl. You can do it, man. We Let's do this together. You know, I'm trying to give some people here at work to um, <laughs> have workout Wednesday, but that haven't worked out yet. And I've been here for two months. So hopefully we can get it started because I need an accountability partner. I can do it by myself, but it's always better to have an accountability partner because you're all helping each other. You're helping yourself, singular, then you're helping each other, plural. So, you know, just think about that and um, just go with it. And hopefully you guys are all meeting your um, health goals and with your education, I want you guys to... You are, are supposed to be spending five hours per day if you are not on pace and if you want to get ahead on your uh, studies per day. And I tell my students, I'm like, okay, well, if you can't do five hours, at least can you do one hour per class? If you can't do that, at least try to do 30 minutes per class. And you need to set your goals on that too, okay? So if you are not doing anything and you are not on pace, you need to do something. New Haven, you are already in quarter two for this card marking. So you should be working on your second set of three classes by now. Okay, you guys can do it. Just whatever you is um, preventing you from uh, getting focused on your studies. You need to evaluate what's going on in your life. I know some of you all are going through a lot. And I pray for all of you, but you need to uh, have some priorities to make sure that you get some things in order and you can get on pace, okay? All right. Now, this video right here may be a little contradictory to uh, what I just said as far as the accountability partner, but if uh, what you are trying to do is big enough, this is something that you want to think about, okay? Hold on, what did I just do? Just messed up. Yeah, it says now we went over here. Okay, give me one second, guys. I don't know what happened, but let's try this one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm like, I feel like I'm not just in left field. <laughs> I hit that button, but... Okay, we're going to do that. I don't know. Weird. What about right here? It says keep your goals in order. Where it says the play button. You click on it. I know. Okay. Well, with that being said, you guys are gonna have to watch this one by yourself, but basically um, what this video was talking about is if your goals are big enough, you may not wanna tell everybody everything that you're doing, okay? So you may, okay, so like for me, I grew up, when I was little, my parents were married, then they got a divorce, unfortunately. I feel some type of way about that. But I grew up with my mom, she, you know what I'm saying, is very supportive and she supports, you know, mostly almost everything that I do and a few entrepreneurial ventures as well. And, you know what I'm saying, we are working on some things together. She has a 501c3 nonprofit. And, you know what I'm saying, we can work together on some things. Then on the other hand, not to bash anybody, somebody else I live with, 
um, you know, they didn't necessarily bash the things that I do, but they just really have like a negative outlook on like too many things in life. So if you are around somebody that like you say, okay, I want to be a millionaire for myself. I don't really want to be that. However, I know that there are a lot of things that I need to do and to change uh, some things in this world. So, okay, I may not want to be that. However, to do the things that I want to do, I'm definitely going to need a pretty penny to make sure some things happen. So if you are around some people that are not going to support you, you don't have to tell them everything, okay? You know, just tell them, oh, I'm working on some things. And if they say, what, well, oh, just say, oh, time will tell, you know, things like that. You just have to keep it moving and uh, know, know who you can tell things to and who you can't. You know, sometimes you have to just keep things to yourself. And like I said before, just write it down and make sure you check back in with yourself. Okay, here I'm talking about master your finances. I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. Um, we could probably have a whole nother little section on this topic in itself but um for your for you guys i mean i would really like for you to um you know work on trying to pay your bills on time these are all things that i'm working on myself if you don't have anything saved you need to work on having some savings okay uh did take class uh called uh, financial peace university it's a really good class to take um, there is a cost associated to it, but once you get to a certain point, you know, you do want to invest in yourself if you are having a hard time with savings. Basically, one of the things that um, they talk about in that class is, you know, having an emergency fund. And I don't know if you guys have an allowance or if you uh, work a job. You definitely want to save some money. You don't want to spend every penny that you get because, there is going to come a rainy day, as my dad, one good thing that he would say, oh, you want to save some money for a rainy day. It's like, oh, you may want to go on vacation. You may want to do some different things, and you just want to work on saving some money. So, you know, if you can't save $100, try to work on saving $25 or $10, you know, and then just build up from there. You want to have, save $100 then get to $500, then a thousand, then one month expenses, three months expenses, uh, nine months expenses, and so on. So like I said, these are things that I'm still working on myself. Also, something else that you guys want to work on as far as um, saving is something called a 52-week savings challenge. So basically how that works is um, you can save like a dollar a day and then you double it from there. And I was like, Ooh, that's kind of a lot <laughs> because when you get to the end of the year, it's like, okay, you're supposed to be saving like $50, $100 and you're supposed to save $200 the next day. And that's kind of hard. So I did calculations where um, basically it, it works out to be like a little more than $100 a month. And um, if you guys are interested, you can email me and I can um, send you some links on that. And um, you can go from there. And the last thing I want to say about um, saving is save your change. Okay. So I went on vacation and I was like, I oh, don't know, I got to have some money to go to Florida. I don't have no money. My uh, mentor is taking me down there. And I said, I don't have any money. So I work with a bunch of young people at a restaurant, right? And so we get to, and a lot of the people that I work with, they're like, oh, I don't want that change. I don't want that change. I'm like, yeah, you don't know the pennies equals the nickels. When you save it, add it up, nickels turn it down, down to the corners, quarters turn the dollars. And I've scrounged up enough money where with my uh, change and I returned some bottles and I had some savings and I scrounged up like $300 to go down there to Florida and have spending money. And so once I told them that they're like, oh, some of the ones that hadn't been saving, they kind of had a different uh, opinion about saving their change. Even though some people are like, I don't like carrying change in my pocket. It's like, that money can add up if you having a really hard time and you really need some money may just want to think about that, okay? Alrighty, so I have one more video and then we have a couple more slides and then we'll be done. 
Well, I'll click on this once. Yeah, it's yeah. working now. Go down and leave it to the Googling. Where? You should just open it. Is that right there? Click on that. See? I'm feeling technolo <laughs> technologically challenged here. <laughs> is it going to open up three times? Is this what this is? I don't know. All right, give me one more second, guys. I don't know what's going on with this thing. A little technical difficulties here. Presentation is going to come back up. Like I said, guys, we're almost done, but hopefully. Where's the right time to do a great thing? If you wait for that perfect, perfect moment, that perfect timing, it's not going to happen. You know what you have to do? You have to create the perfect time and the perfect opportunity and the perfect situation. So a lot of people become comfortable. They stop growing, they stop wanting anything, they, they become satisfied. People getting ready to go to jobs that they don't like, jobs that are making them sick. You see, when you're not pursuing your goal, you are literally committing spiritual suicide. When you have some goal out here that you're stretching for and reaching for that takes you out of your comfort zone, you'll find out some talents and abilities you have that you didn't know you had. When the message of misery visits you, what are you going to do? What will keep you in the game? There are things that you think you'll never need to know, that you may only need to know one time in your life, but that could save your life because you had that knowledge. If you attempt to do something beyond that, which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it, that you talked yourself out of it? You're waiting on your next door neighbor to make it happen for you. It may not happen. If you're waiting on your mother or your father, they may be so ancient in their thinking that they don't understand this opportunity that you have. And if you wait waiting on them, it may never get done. You don't beg average people to be phenomenal. You don't beg good people to be phenomenal. You just are phenomenal and you will attract phenomenal. What reason can you remember that you can call on, that you can reach on, that can make you get back up? Why is that reason? If you're not where you are, if you're not where you want to be, if you don't have what you want, you want to have, if you're not where you think you should be in this particular place, it has nothing to do with the system, but it has everything to do with the fact that you're not making the sound of life. I want you to make that dream become a reality, because if you don't, you will be working for somebody else to make their dream become a reality. Everybody is against you or don't believe in you no more. And let me tell you something, that's a lonely feeling. It's a lonely feeling, particularly people that you're doing it for. Most people take their greatness, take their ideas to the graveyard with them. Listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. There are people
people right now who are working who don't want to work. There are people who hate their jobs and they keep getting up and doing it. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. Because in the graveyard we will find inventions that we never ever were exposed to. Ideas, dreams that never became reality. Hopes and aspirations that were never acted upon. The question is, what are you going to do? What drives you? Greatness is a lot of small things done well. Day after day, workout after workout, obedience after obedience, day after day. When things don't work out for you, when things happen that you could not anticipate, what are the reasons that you can think of that can keep you strong? You will never, ever be successful until you turn your pain into greatness, until you allow your pain to push you from where you are to push you to where you need to be. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. Your pain is going to be a part of your trial, a part of your trial. I, I Okay, guys, hopefully you got something from that video. Um, let's see here. <laughs> oh, this teacher over here, she's so funny. She don't want to be in the video. Okay, I'm supposed to click this right here. Okay, guys, can y'all see me? Okay, here I am. All right, so... Does anybody know what these are? Can y'all see it? Okay, so what these are, this is a cup that you get at um like Wendy's and different little restaurants and you're supposed to put um ketchup in it. And do you did you do you know anything can happen to this? Did you ever know that? Did you ever know that? Yeah. Yeah, so like, how many of these cups do you get when you go to the restaurant? I normally get about at least three or four. So, um, I just want to show you. These things can open up. Oops, I just tore it. I guess you can't be so uh, abrasive with it. But these things, can y'all see them? I'm trying to open it up. But these things open up like four times the capacity. So if you guys are at a restaurant and your hands are clean 
they need to start having sanitizers by the uh where you fill your ketchup packets. So this went from this right here to four times the capacity. So it's like as we relate this to everyday life, my question to you is are you reaching your full potential? Are you reaching your full potential? That that goes for my teachers that may watch this, any students, whatever you're doing in your life, we're talking about goals here. Are you reaching your full potential? Are you just getting a bunch of cups, starting all over? Or are you maximizing the most out of your life and everything that you have the potential to do? That's the question. So I'm leaving that with you. I want you guys to reach your full potential. God word. As you um, set goals for yourself and um, reach a, 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 better, a better life. And I do want to talk about uh, Murphy's Law, something that my 11th grade teacher told me. The one thing I remember from 11th grade English class is actually it was 12th grade. Do not wait till the last minute to do things. I'm experiencing a little bit of that today. <laughs> because if you do, something can and will go wrong. Okay, after watching that video, I just want to talk on that graveyard piece. When it's talking about full potential, he said the wealthiest place on earth is the graveyard because it's music that will never be produced, paintings that will never be painted, other artwork that will never be produced, magazines that won't be produced, Ideas that won't be produced, visions that won't come to reality, different schools that won't be started, different businesses that won't be started. But if you guys set yourself up for your future and positivity, then you can reach any goal that you set your mind to. Another thing, don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. You can do it. Whatever you set your mind to, just Keep trying. If it don't work out the first time, try again. What is it saying? If at first you don't succeed, try again. I may not be saying it right, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. All right? You guys can do it. I'm looking forward to hearing some success stories. And once you do, uh, reach out to me. I would like to hear some success stories. And you can get back with your teachers for any um, extra credit. And I thank you guys for watching and thank you for joining. And the call word one more time is full potential. All right, you guys have a great day. And I'm excited about your success.